Good morning and happy Sunday. Welcome to Friendship House of Prayer. I am Pastor Cassandra Ford, and we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, we thank and praise God today just for breathing on us this day to see another day. God is just so good. He's great. He's awesome. He's all of that. And today we give him praise. Listen, we want to continue to lift in prayer Sister Hatcher and her family and the loss of her brother. During this difficult time, we want to be there for that family, give calls, send cards, and do whatever we need to do as a church family, because when she hurts, we hurt. When each and every one of us hurt, we all should hurt. We thank and praise God just for keeping all of us during this time. At this time, we are going to have prayer. We are going to sing praises unto the Lord in praise and worship, and we are going to get in the word and digest it. Praise God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for being God all by yourself, Father. We thank you for being our Jehovah Jireh, our Jehovah Rapha. Lord God, we thank you just for being great and awesome. Father, we thank you for being a way maker, a gatekeeper. We thank you for opening doors no man can open, shutting doors no man can close. Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name. Now we ask that you come into our hearts, Lord God, and open it up to receive the word of God. Father God, I even ask, I ask that you allow me to be that good soil, Lord God, that may produce, Father God, the fruit of your word. I thank you, oh God. I praise you. I lift your name up. I shabak you in the name of Jesus because you are worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we go into praise and worship and lift up the name of Jesus? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone Because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything I lift my hands in total adoration More than anything 
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus, yeah. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more. Praise God and amen. Listen, this is the second Sunday of 2021, and we are going to partake in the Lord's Supper at the end of this message, so I want you to prepare yourselves. Traditionally, we take communion every first Sunday of the month, as we will continue to do, except this Sunday, the second Sunday, we are going to partake in the communion today. Thereafter, it will always be the first Sunday of the month. Now, however, some people take communion every day. Some churches take it every day. Some take it once a week, once a month, some even quarterly. Let's see what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 says, As often as... As ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So whenever you take communion, you are in order. Do so as often as you can in remembrance of him. So we are going to take it today and be blessed. Let's go to the word of God. Would you turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 7 verses 1 through 10. That's the book of Luke, chapter 7, 1 through 10. It reads, When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves help, he does, they said. For he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue, synagogue for us. So Jesus went with him. But just before they arrived at the house, the officers sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they will go, or come, and they will come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, 
I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. We want to talk today from the title of what faith looks like. What faith looks like. So here's the layout. Jesus is in this little town called Capernaum. As he gets there, he's met by a group of Jewish elders. So they're coming up to him on a request on a behalf of this Roman officer. Now this Roman officer is a centurion soldier, centurion officer. He's centurion because he's a captain over a hundred men. So they come in to Jesus on his behalf. The problem this Roman officer had was the fact that he had a servant. He had a slave. And his high value slave, not just a regular slave, but his high value slave was dying. So this Roman officer heard about the power of healing, about how Jesus was healing people. So because he didn't have that relationship with Jesus and he didn't know the Lord, he didn't grow up knowing the Lord like these Jewish elders did. Now, mind you, this Roman officer was a Gentile. So because he heard the power of healing through Jesus, he went to these Jewish elders and said, hey, listen, can you go get Jesus and have Jesus to come to my home and heal my high valued slave because he is dying? They had a great relationship. So these Jewish elders went to get Jesus. Here's the conversation. They go to Jesus and they says, Jesus, listen, we have a favor to ask of you. If you can come and heal this Roman officer slave who is dying right now. This man is so deserving, they said. He built the church for us. He built the synagogue. And if you go into it, you'll see a plaque with his name on it. If anybody deserving is deserving of a favor from you, it would be this Roman officer. He's helped so many people. He's a good person. If you can just come and heal his slave, his servant, that's what he's requesting. So here's Jesus on his way to the Roman officer's house. So, but before he gets there, Here's another group of the Roman officer friends. Now they come to Jesus and they said, Jesus, we have a message to give you from the Roman officer who sent for you in the first place. He says, wait a minute now, stop where you are. He said, he wants you to know that he says, I am not worthy of you coming to my home. And I am not worthy of me even coming to meet you. So you can stop right there. You don't have to come in my home. This Roman soldier, this Roman officer, who's a Gentile, who did not grow up in the Lord. He says this, change the whole dynamics. He says, wherever you are, right where you are, if you just say a word, I believe. My servant will be healed. If you just say a word, you don't have to come in the home. You don't have to meet me because I'm not worthy. I'm unclean. I've done some things in my past that makes me know I am not worthy of you, Jesus, of your high standards, your honor. I'm not worthy. This man humbled himself unto the Lord. He sent message. Now, the first message he sent to the elders, the Jewish elders was, if you can come and heal him. 
And on the way, when Jesus was traveling to his home and got them, this man had a revelation. He says, wait a minute, stop. Hold up, wait a minute. You don't even have to come in. He started thinking, wait a minute. I've seen the work and heard about all the work and all the healing that you have done. Even if though I didn't grow up in the Lord, now that I see your work, I believe in your work. You don't have to come in. This man said, if you can just say a word, he believed that his servant, his slave, his high value slave will be healed. Say a word, speak a word, Lord, right where you are. And my servant, he says, will be healed. Jesus says, oh my goodness. He turned around to the crowd. Jesus says, did you hear that? This is the type of faith I'm talking about. He's looking at the crowd. Jesus got excited because this faith this man had had just did something to him. He said, oh my gosh, did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he sent message to tell me? He said, if you just stay right where you are because he's not worthy. He said, if you can just say a word, Lord, I believe. And that's the thing. You have to believe in order to have faith. You have to believe. He said, I believe my servant will be healed. Jesus turned around to that crowd. That crowd, I believe, got excited because Jesus was so excited saying, did you hear? He says, I have never saw this type of faith in Israel at all. I have never seen it before. And coming from this Gentile who says, I believe if you can just say a word where, right where you are. What is faith though? We can say, well, the book of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Well, okay, sounds good, that's scriptures. What does that really mean? In other words, faith is acting like it's so. Even when it's not so, in order for it to be so, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you want to please God, you must have faith. You must believe in God and you must believe in his works, his healing power, his delivering power. You have to believe that God can do all things, all things. He has all powers in his hand. When he raised from the dead, he said, "I had, he raised with all power in his hands. We have to have that same faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We have to have that same faith. And once you get faith, don't think that's it. Because faith goes by level to level to level. You will continue to grow in faith as long as you are on this earth. Faith. We must have faith in order to please God. What does faith look like? Faith looks like chap, um, Luke chapter 7. That's what faith looks like. As soon as he said, you don't have to come. If you can just speak a word, I believe I'll be healed. It's just like the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, you don't have to lay your hands on me. You don't have to come to me. I don't have to shake your hand. I don't have to sup with you. She said, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I will be made whole. Your faith will make you whole. You have to believe and know. Surely as I say to you, as soon as you start believing, the enemy is going to come and start speaking to you like never before. You're going to say, I believe you, Lord. I believe and I have faith. The enemy is going to start reminding you of what you did, what you said, and make sure you know you are not worthy. Go ahead, accept that. Lord, I know I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, but you keep blessing me. I'm not worthy, but you keep delivering me. I'm not worthy, but you keep healing me. I'm not worthy. And as long as we on this earth, we will never be worthy to ask Jesus for anything. But we ask even in our 
when we're not worthy, we still answer and he still delivers. Good God. I thank God. I thank God because we should be growing in faith every time we read scripture. It should penetrate in our heart and we should continue to grow in faith. That's what faith looks like. Grab hold to faith. Act like it's so even though it's not so in order for it to be so. You can't see faith. You can't see it. So when you have faith, the enemy will start putting negative things in front of you so you can see that. So you have to look past that and see the good and grab hold to your faith. You grab hold to it by putting your hand in the master hand. God is the problem solver. Give your problems to the problem solver, which is Jesus Christ. He'll fix it. You can't handle it. That's what faith looks like. Believe in it. Even though you can't see it. My God. I pray we all grow in faith. And I pray you receive something from this message. That will make you run to scripture. And increase your faith. I pray that you receive something from this message. That will make you say Lord. I desire to have you Lord of my life. And if that's you. You just reach out to heaven and tell him, Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died and rose for me. Lord, I am a sinner saved by grace. And Lord, please forgive me of my sins. But I desire and I need and I want to make you Lord of my life. Come into my heart, Lord. Help me, deliver me and save me. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. And there's nothing no one else can do about it, even your enemies. Because the Bible says on that with your enemies, when a man weighs as pleases God, he will make your enemies be at peace with you. I pray you wrap your loving arms around the word of God. And allow it to get into your heart so you can start living on a higher level of faith. Don't forget people of God. People of God. Call people. Call and check on them. Call and share this word with them. Call and let them know you love them. Call and let people know that you are concerned about them. So many times we think about people and we say, oh, I'm going to call them a little later. I'm going to call them a little later. I've done that so many times. And I said, you know what, Cassandra? Look at here, girl. You're going to get some discipline, more discipline in your life. You got this okay. You got this okay. But I need you to sit down and start doing the things that's in your heart. And that's calling the saints of God. You too. Call people. Let them know. People need to hear a word from heaven. And sometimes you the only God that they see through you and through your words. Let's do this together. We are in this together. Although we are on this road, this journey, single by ourselves. But we are all in this together. Praise God. Amen. I thank God for you, you, and you. Let's continue to keep people prayed up so we can continue to go up in faith. Amen. I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, Whosoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. 
For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 33. Heavenly Father, we come again, Lord. Father, just to thank you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we thank you for watching over us last night, touching us with the finger of love, and starting us on our way. Father, we ask that you bless Friendship House of Prayer Baptist Church. Father, bless our pastor, Reverend Cassandra Ford. Heavenly Father, strengthen her and stand by, bless her in a mighty way. Father, we ask that you bless the front line of the viruses, Lord. Touch them, bless them in a mighty way. Father, go by the White House, Father. Touch them and bless them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless our nation, Lord. Strengthen us and stand by us. Father, help us to come together in love. Look down upon us, Heavenly Father. Strengthen us and stand by us. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Continue to bless Friendship House of Prayer. Continue to bless every member of the church. Father, bless all our sick and shut in. Bless the bereaved, Lord. Strengthen them, touch them in a mighty way. Father, these blessings I ask and pray in our Father's name. Amen. John 6 and 53 tells us, Jesus says, unless we eat of his body and drink of his blood, we have no life. Therefore, we partake in the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him. The scripture says, he took the bread and break it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, take, drink. This is the blood that I have shared for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come again, Lord Father, just to thank you. Father, we just thank you for watching over us, Father, while we slumber and slept. Father, we ask that you bless us, Lord, as we come to a close. Help us, strengthen us, and stand by us. Bless us, Father, as we prepare to go to our destination. These blessings we ask and pray in our Father's name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give Jesus the praise.